My stepfather wants me to be the free babysitter for his kids while my mother is in the hospital because he's now the one giving the orders, but then he loses both my mother and his children when told so. I don't know if anyone is going to read this or if it will just be a way to get out what I'm feeling inside, but I feel like I can't take it anymore. I live in a situation that has become increasingly difficult to endure, and I don't know if I'm the one being selfish or if they are truly asking too much of me. To give you some context, my name is Sarah, and I'm 15 years old. I live in a small town in the United States with my mom and my stepfather. My parents separated when I was nine, and since then I've lived with my mom. After the separation, my dad moved to another country for work, something I didn't fully understand at the time. It wasn't easy for me when he left, but staying with my mom was the most reasonable option. I had my friends, my school, my life here. Things between my mom and me were always good. It was just the two of us, and although we didn't have much money, we were fine. I always felt safe with her, and even though I sometimes miss my dad, I knew he was doing what he needed to do to move on with his life. We would talk on the phone and he would tell me how things were going at work and what the place where he lived was like. He promised to visit me when he could, and although those visits didn't happen as often as I would have liked, at least we kept in touch. A couple of years after the separation, my mom started dating a man. First, I didn't take it too seriously. I thought it would be something temporary, just another boyfriend who wouldn't stay for long. But I was wrong. This man, whom I'll call Steve, not only stayed but eventually became my stepfather. And with him came his three children, who were much younger then than they are now. At first, I tried to adapt to the new family dynamic. It was strange having other kids in the house, but I didn't pay much attention to them. My mom was happy with Steve and that was what mattered most to me. I didn't get too involved with my new step-siblings but they didn't bother me either. We simply lived in the same house without major problems. They were kids after all. But over time things began to change. I can't say exactly when I realized something was wrong, but I think it was when I started to notice how they treated my mom. The passive-aggressive comments they made about her made me uncomfortable. They were things that clearly hadn't come out of their mouth spontaneously. Someone had taught them. For example, they would say things like, My mom says your mom doesn't know how to cook like moms who take good care of their kids. Or when my mom bought new clothes, there was always the comment, My mom says those clothes look cheap, but it's okay, not everyone has good taste. My mom, who had always been a strong person, seemed not to react to those comments. But I saw it. They hurt her, even though she tried to hide it. And it wasn't hard to tell where they were coming from. My step-sibling's mother, Steve's ex-wife, was clearly still bitter about the fact that he had left her. On several occasions, they crossed paths when my mom went to pick up the kids. And although there weren't many encounters, there were enough to see that this woman had a problem with my mom. I remember one time in particular when we went to pick up the kids after a visit with their mother. While my step-siblings were gathering their things and loading them up, we all stayed at the door chatting. Then at one point, my stepfather's ex-wife said, It's not easy to find a man when you have three kids to take care of. After my mom had asked her if she had any plans for the weekend, just making a bit of small talk. Then she said she knew what she was talking about because she had even lost hers to another woman because of that. It was very awkward because it implied that my mom had stolen her husband when, in reality, they had been divorced for about two years by the time they started dating. My mom, visibly upset, responded by saying that maybe she should have thought of that before starting a baby factory. Maybe what my mom said was a bit harsh but keep in mind this was after her stepchildren had started saying horrible things to her at home, and my mom knew they said it because it was what their mother had told them or what they heard her say at home. My stepfather, Steve, tried to keep order in the house. Every time he heard his children make some hurtful comment, he would scold them. But I knew that wouldn't stop them. The real source of those thoughts was their mother. And no matter how much Steve tried to correct them, she kept planting those ideas in their heads. He even talked to her, asking her to stop putting those ideas into the kids' minds, but she always denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. My kids just say what they see. They don't have filters, they don't know how to lie, was her usual response. The situation was uncomfortable, but I tried not to get too involved to avoid escalating things. I let the adults handle it. They weren't my kids nor my problem, though it hurt to see my mom go through it. However, if I heard them say something bad about my mom in front of me when she wasn't around, I would usually say something or defend her. Not just because she's my mom, but because it also seemed like the right thing to do. But everything changed a week ago. My mom had to undergo major surgery and has been in the hospital recovering since then. I don't know if it was because she was so focused on her health, but she seemed relieved not to have to be at home for a while. The situation at home wasn't easy for her. And now without her here, things have become impossible for me. Since my mom went to the hospital, my stepfather started asking me to do more things around the house. That didn't bother me at first. 
I was already helping with household chores before, and I didn't mind contributing a bit more now that my mom wasn't around. However, what started as small requests gradually turned into an endless series of responsibilities. Steve started demanding that I take care of my step-siblings, not just helping with household chores, but also watching over them as if I were their babysitter. And these weren't just simple requests for help. He demanded it as if he were my boss. First, I thought I could handle it. I got up early to make them breakfast, made sure they did their homework, and helped with whatever I could. But I quickly realized I was neglecting my own life. My studies began to suffer, I didn't have time to focus on my own schoolwork, and I was becoming more and more stressed. I tried to talk to Steve about this. I explained that I didn't mind helping, but that I couldn't do everything alone. I also suggested that the kids, at least the older ones, could help out a bit. I'm not saying the six-year-old should do chores, but the ten-year-old could pick up his things or set the table. I thought it was a reasonable suggestion, but Steve didn't see it that way. He looked me straight in the eyes and said that while my mom was gone, it was my responsibility to take care of everything. He wasn't going to hire someone to help, and according to him, I had no choice but to obey. His response was very clear. I'm not asking for your opinion, Sarah, I'm giving you an order. As long as you live in this house, you'll do what I say. And this is where the situation gets even more complicated because that house doesn't even belong to him. It's not even my mom's, it's my dad's. My dad left us the house when he moved abroad because he wasn't going to use it, and he didn't want the hassle of renting it out from so far away or paying someone to do it. Plus, my mom was renting her own house at the time, and it seemed like a good idea to let us use it while he wasn't here. So technically, Steve is giving orders in a house that doesn't even belong to him. I don't want to tell my mom about all this because I know she already has enough on her mind. She's in the hospital recovering from surgery, and the last thing she needs is more stress. I visit her when I can, but I haven't mentioned anything about what's going on at home. I don't want to worry her more than she already is. I've also thought about telling my dad. But honestly, I don't know what he could do from so far away. He'll probably just get mad and yell at Steve over the phone, but that wouldn't solve anything. I don't want to cause a bigger conflict, but at the same time, I don't know how much more I can take. The only thing keeping me sane is knowing that in two days my step-siblings will go back to their mother, and I'll be able to have some time for myself, but I know it won't last long. As soon as they come back, everything will start again. So here I am, wondering if I'm the one being selfish for not wanting to do all this. Is it really my responsibility to take care of the house and the kids while my mom's not here? Or are they taking advantage of me by asking for so much? I'm not their mother. I shouldn't have to take care of everything. But at the same time, I feel guilty for not wanting to help more. I don't want my mom to worry, but I also can't keep living like this. I can't sacrifice my education and well-being for something that shouldn't be my problem. Update 1. Honestly, it was such a relief to read that I'm not being selfish in this situation. Sometimes when you're stuck in something like this, it's hard to see things clearly, especially when you're a kid and the adult in charge is supposed to be the responsible one. But after reading the comments, I realized I'm not wrong for feeling overwhelmed. Most people agree that it's my stepfather who should be handling this, since they're his kids. Many pointed out that I've already done too much by helping with everything that's been asked of me, and that I should prioritize my studies and my own life. It's true that I've hardly been able to study at all these past few days, and it's starting to affect me. I failed a couple of important exams, and that's really worrying me. I also have several assignments I haven't been able to finish, and I feel like I'm falling further behind. This isn't just affecting me academically. It's also causing me a lot of anxiety because I know time is ticking, and I don't have the space to catch up. These few days that my step-siblings have been at their mother's house have been a total relief for me. I finally had some peace and quiet to focus on my studies and organize myself a little, but at the same time I have so much work piled up that there's not enough time. Even though I've tried to make the most of this break, I know that in a few days my step-siblings will be back, and the chaos will return to my life. I can't keep up this pace much longer. I need a more permanent solution, and I don't even have a social life. I haven't been able to see my friends or do anything else since the little free time I have, which I wouldn't even call free time because it's time I should be using for my studies, I've been using to visit my mom in the hospital. To make matters worse, my mom will be out of the hospital soon, which should be good news, but it also means she'll need to rest at home. She won't be able to take care of household chores or my step-siblings, and I don't want her to. The last thing I want is for her to push herself too hard while she's recovering. This puts me in a really tough position because while I'd love for things to go back to normal, I know it won't be possible for quite some time. And meanwhile, my stepfather keeps expecting me to take care of everything. Since my mom went to the hospital, Steve hasn't eased up with his demands. Even though my step-siblings aren't here at the moment, 
He's still demanding that I do things like clean the house, cook for him, and even mow the lawn. However, now I only do the bare minimum to keep the house from turning into a total mess. I clean the common areas just enough so they don't look too cluttered, and I cook my own meals. I'm not cooking for him or doing extra chores that clearly aren't my responsibility. Obviously, this has led to some arguments between us. When Steve comes home from work in the evening, the first thing he does is inspect the house to see if everything is in order. If he notices that I haven't done something he expected me to do, he starts complaining and telling me I'm being irresponsible and ungrateful. Just yesterday, we had a pretty tense argument because when he got home, he realized I hadn't mowed the lawn, something he had ordered me to do before he left in the morning. He told me I wasn't a guest in this house and that I had to earn my right to be here by helping with the responsibilities. My response was very simple. I told him I wasn't his maid, and I certainly wasn't the mother of his children. If he wanted the lawn mowed, he could do it himself or pay someone to do it. Clearly, he didn't like my response, and we ended up arguing for nearly an hour. It was exhausting. The tension between us has become almost unbearable. Every time we get into situations like this I feel even more alone. I'm dealing with all of this by myself, and every day I feel like I'm walking on a tightrope that could snap at any moment. That's why today I decided to do something different. I wasn't sure if it was a good idea but I didn't know what else to do so I took a risk. I sent a text message to my step-sibling's mother, Steve's ex-wife. I didn't tell her the whole story but I told her enough. I explained that Steve was using me to take care of his kids while he was out, and that I thought it was unfair to be made responsible for something that wasn't my duty. I tried to be as polite as possible, because although I don't have a bad relationship with her, we're not particularly close either. Honestly I wasn't expecting much, but I thought it was worth a shot. To my surprise she replied pretty quickly. Her response was short and direct. I'll take care of this. I'm not exactly sure what she meant by that, but I hope she does something about it. Maybe she'll talk to Steve or maybe she'll talk to the kids. I have no idea what she plans to do but hopefully her involvement will help ease some of the pressure I'm feeling right now. I know this isn't going to solve all my problems, but it's a step. At this point, anything that makes the situation even a little bit better is welcome. I just hope this decision doesn't end up making things worse between Steve and me. Although there's already enough tension between us, adding his ex-wife into the mix could be like throwing gasoline on the fire. Still, I felt like I had nothing left to lose. Update 2. It's only been a day since I sent that message to Steve's ex-wife, and honestly, things couldn't have gone worse. I thought maybe she'd talk to him or try to find a more reasonable solution for everyone, but instead, everything has fallen apart in ways I never imagined. Steve came home last night later than usual. From the moment he walked through the door, I could tell something was wrong. His face was completely twisted with rage, an expression I had never seen on him before, at least not like that. Normally, when we argue, he stays cold and distant, but this time it was different. He looked at me like I was the cause of all his problems, and before I could say anything, he started yelling. The first thing out of his mouth was, How dare you meddle in my private life? My heart stopped for a second, and I knew immediately that my message to his ex-wife had set off a storm. I stayed silent trying to stay calm but he didn't stop. He shouted that I had no right to involve his ex-wife in matters that didn't concern me, calling me a nosy kid who doesn't understand anything that's going on. I told him I was just trying to find a solution, that I couldn't keep handling everything alone, and I thought she might be able to help. I explained that I did it because I believed it would be better for everyone but by that point he wasn't listening. He cut me off saying I'd made a huge mistake and that, because of me, his ex-wife was now threatening to seek full custody of my step-siblings. According to him, she told him she was going to take him to court, had spoken to a lawyer, and was going to argue that Steve wasn't a responsible parent when it was his turn to take care of the kids. Steve was out of his mind, almost hysterical. He started pacing back and forth in the living room, throwing things and cursing. He kept saying I had ruined everything, that if his ex got full custody, he would lose his children forever, and it would be my fault. He said she was already using the fact that I had to take care of them alone as proof that he couldn't manage the situation. I tried to defend myself but he wouldn't let me. He came toward me more aggressively than he ever had before. He was furious and he looked at me like I was the reason for all his problems. Then he said something that chilled me to the bone. You'd better fix what you've done, or you might need to find somewhere else to live. At that moment, I felt like the ground was crumbling beneath my feet. Until now, our arguments had always been tense, but he had never said anything so threatening. In that instant, I realized I was really in danger. My mind started racing, searching for options, but the truth is, I have nowhere to go. My mom is still in the hospital, and although she'll be out soon, she'll still need rest and care. 
I don't want to add more worries to her, but after what happened last night, I feel like I can't stay in this house anymore. The problem is, I don't have any other relatives I can turn to. My grandparents live too far away, and they aren't in a position to take me in. I don't have siblings or uncles I can count on. My only real option is to call my dad, but even that scares me. He's thousands of miles away in another country, and although I'm sure he would do whatever he could to help me, I don't know if that would be enough. Steve kept yelling for a while longer, telling me I'd put him in an impossible situation, that now he would have to spend money on lawyers and that it would ruin him. He made me feel like everything that's gone wrong in his life is my fault, and I don't know how to deal with that. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he went to his room and slammed the door. I stayed in the living room, shaking with fear, not knowing what to do. I sat on the couch for hours trying to figure out a way out. At one point I thought about calling the police, but I didn't know what to tell them. He hasn't hit me or physically hurt me, but that threat, that feeling that he could throw me out of the house at any moment, is enough to terrify me. I feel trapped. I went to my room and locked the door, though I'm not sure how much good that would do if he really decided to do something. I couldn't sleep all night. I kept tossing and turning with my heart racing, thinking about all the possibilities. I could try talking to my mom, but I know she's not in a position to handle this right now. Every time I visit her, I try not to show her how bad things are. She needs to rest and recover, not worry about the problems at home. The most logical thing would be to call my dad. He's always been someone I trust, but I also know he's very far away and won't be able to come quickly. Plus, I don't want this to turn into a confrontation between him and Steve. This morning, Steve barely spoke to me. He left for work as usual, but before he left, he left a note on the kitchen table telling me I had to clean the whole house before he got back. He didn't mention anything about last night, but the threat is still hanging in the air. I don't know what's going to happen when he comes back tonight. What scares me the most is that I don't know how to stop him. If Steve really decides that he doesn't want me living here anymore, what am I going to do? I'm in a house that technically isn't his, but it isn't mine either. I know my dad left us this house, but if Steve decides to kick me out, how can I stop him? I can't afford a lawyer, and I don't have anyone who can do it for me. I'm trapped. I'm terrified of what might happen tonight when Steve comes home. And honestly, I don't know what to do. Update 3. First, I want to thank everyone who showed concern for me and gave me advice in my last update. A lot of people suggested I call the police, and while I was ready to do that if things got worse fortunately it didn't come to that. What really changed everything was that I decided to tell my dad what was happening, and he did what any good father would do. He traveled as quickly as possible to be here. I called him the morning after Steve threatened to kick me out of the house. I was terrified so I picked up the phone and called him. At first I wasn't sure how to tell him everything. My voice was trembling, and he immediately knew something was wrong. I explained everything as quickly as I could, trying not to break down in tears while I told him how Steve had gone crazy, how he had yelled and blamed me for everything that was happening. I told him that Steve had threatened to throw me out if I didn't fix his situation. My dad was silent for a moment, and then his tone changed. He sounded more serious and angrier than I had ever heard him before. He promised he would get here as soon as possible, and he did. Not even two days had passed since that call when, after coming home from school, I found the biggest surprise. I walked into the house and there he was sitting on the living room couch waiting for me. It was such an immense relief to see him there. And I couldn't help but run to hug him. I'm not usually one to show a lot of emotion but that day I couldn't hold back. We sat down and talked for a long time. I told him more details about everything that had happened, from the moment my mom went to the hospital to the message I sent to Steve's ex-wife and how everything exploded afterward. My dad listened attentively, nodding occasionally, but I could see the anger in his eyes, barely contained. Even though he's always been a calm and rational person, I could tell he was furious, not just about what had happened but also about how Steve had treated me. The first thing my dad did was make a clear decision. Steve could no longer stay in our house. Although they'd had a cordial relationship in the past, this had crossed the line, and my dad wasn't going to tolerate anyone treating his daughter like that. And he wasn't going to wait for Steve to figure it out on his own. After our conversation my dad went straight to work. He got up from the couch and started packing up Steve's things. It was as if he had been waiting to do this from the moment he stepped into the house. He pulled out a few trash bags from the closet and started stuffing all of Steve's belongings into them. His clothes, his shoes, his tools that had been lying around. Within a few hours, the living room was filled with things I hadn't even realized Steve had accumulated. Soon after, the garage was packed with Steve's belongings, all ready for him to pick up and leave. Finally, the moment came. Steve came home as usual around 7 in the evening. I wasn't sure how he would react when he saw what had happened in his absence, 
but I trusted my dad to handle it. Steve walked in through the front door, and the first thing he saw was my dad waiting for him in the living room. There wasn't much to say at that point. Steve's expression quickly shifted from surprise to anger as he realized something was very wrong. Before he could say anything, my dad cut him off immediately. We need to talk. That was when I decided to step back. I went up to my room and closed the door, but I could still hear everything. The next thing I heard was my dad telling Steve that he wasn't going to tolerate what had happened. He made it clear that Steve had no right to treat me the way he did and that the house didn't belong to him. Steve tried to defend himself, saying it was all a misunderstanding, that I had provoked him by meddling where I didn't belong, but my dad wasn't interested in hearing excuses. He told Steve directly that he had packed up all his things, and they were in the garage ready for him to take. Steve tried to resist. He said he had no intention of leaving the house and that he had just as much right to be there, given that he had been living with my mom for quite some time. My dad's response was clear. This house isn't yours and you have no right to treat my daughter that way. So you can leave now or I can decide how you leave. At that point, I knew the situation was about to explode. I could hear the argument escalating, with Steve raising his voice and trying to assert his will. But my dad wasn't intimidated. He told Steve repeatedly that he wasn't going to allow someone like him to stay in the house for even one more day. As the tension grew, Steve realized he didn't have many options. At the end of the day, he knew it wasn't his house, and he had no legal authority to stay. After several minutes of arguing, Steve finally gave in. I heard him muttering curses under his breath as he walked to the garage to gather some of his things. My dad didn't move from the living room until he was sure Steve was ready to leave. From my room, I could hear the sound of bags being dragged to his car. Steve was furious, but he knew he couldn't do anything to change the situation. Before he left, there was one final exchange between him and my dad. I couldn't hear everything they said, but my dad's final words were clear in my mind. Don't ever set foot in this house again. And with those words, Steve left. He took some of his things, got in his car and drove off, leaving behind an almost overwhelming silence. When I finally came down from my room, my dad was still in the living room. He seemed calmer, but there was still some tension in the air. I approached him and asked if everything was okay. And he told me it was that I didn't have to worry about Steve anymore. He stayed with me on the couch for a while longer, and we talked about what would happen next. Now that Steve is gone, my dad and I are waiting for my mom to come home from the hospital. We haven't told her any of this yet because we don't want to stress her out, but we know we'll eventually have to tell her everything. I don't know how she'll take it, but I trust she'll understand. The important thing is that Steve is no longer here, and that I can finally feel safe in my own home. For now, my dad is going to stay with me until my mom comes back. We're going to try to get things back to normal little by little. Although I know things won't be easy, Having him here gives me the strength I need to face whatever comes next. Update 4. It's been a couple of weeks since I last wrote, and things at home are finally starting to return to some kind of normalcy, or at least a new normal after everything that's happened. The most important thing is that my mom is back home. After all this time in the hospital, she's finally returned, and she's resting just as the doctors recommended. The day I went to pick her up from the hospital was a bit strange because my dad insisted on coming with me. My dad had been there for me through all of this so it made sense that he wanted to be there when my mom came home. When we arrived at the hospital, my mom was surprised to see my dad. It was clear from the look on her face how strange it was for her to see her ex-husband there, waiting to bring her home. But after that first moment of surprise, she was happy to have him there. The hardest part was when my dad and I told her everything that had happened during her absence. We had decided to wait until she was home, more comfortable, before talking about all the drama with Steve. It was hard to find the right moment, but when we did, my dad took the lead in explaining what had happened. My mom listened in silence without interrupting, as we told her how Steve had been treating me, how he had lost control and how in the end my dad had to kick him out of the house. Her expression shifted from surprise to anger, and then to deep sadness. When we finished talking she just nodded, as if she was processing everything she had just heard. Finally, she turned to me and said I should have told her everything from the beginning, that she wouldn't have wanted me to go through all of that alone. But my dad stepped in and told her that it wasn't necessary for her to know at the time, because she was recovering. However, my mom agreed with my dad on one important thing. I should have told him what was happening much earlier before things got out of control. She didn't say it in a reproachful way, but it made me realize I should have trusted my dad sooner, instead of trying to handle everything by myself. That conversation led to an important decision. My mom is determined to file for divorce from Steve. After hearing everything he did while she was away, she can't imagine continuing in a relationship with him. 
She couldn't believe that Steve, someone she had spent years of her life with, had acted in such a cruel and selfish way. Since my mom has been back home, things have been much more peaceful. She's resting and I've been helping with household chores, but it's nothing compared to the work Steve forced me to do. I don't feel the constant pressure of having to take care of everything and everyone anymore. On the other hand, my dad has also returned to his job. After making sure everything was under control and that my mom was okay, he went back abroad. It was sad to say goodbye to him, but knowing he was here when I needed him most gave me a peace and confidence I hadn't felt in a long time. He told me that from now on, he would be much more attentive, that he wouldn't leave me alone again. My mom is in good spirits, and although she's focused on her recovery, she's also started making plans for the future, thinking about how she'll handle the divorce and reorganize her life without Steve. She can also relax more now that she doesn't have to deal with her stepchildren. Despite everything that happened, I feel like we're on the right path. My mom and I have talked a lot more in these past few weeks than we had in the entire past year. Steve is no longer a part of our lives, and although there's still a lot left to resolve, at least I feel like I can breathe again. Update 5. It's been a few months since I last wrote. The most important news is that my mom has finally gotten her divorce from Steve. She seems calmer, more relaxed, and although this whole time has been tough, I think we've both come out stronger from it. My mom was very firm throughout the divorce process. After everything that happened, she wasn't willing to give in at all. Steve tried to make excuses as always, but in the end, he didn't have much to defend himself with. The way he treated me while my mom was away was the final straw, and there was no turning back. My mom knew from the start that she didn't want to continue with him. Another big piece of news is that my dad has moved back to the country. After years of working abroad, his company decided to bring him back and with a promotion. It's something I never would have expected, but it makes me so happy. All this time, I always felt like there was a barrier between us because of the distance, and although we talked and tried to stay connected, it wasn't the same. Now, with him here close to me, I feel like we can reconnect in a different way. My dad is excited about this new chapter in his life. Not only has he returned with a better position in his company, but he's also happy to be closer to me and more actively involved in my life. He no longer has to worry about being so far away and only being able to support me from a distance. Now we'll be able to see each other more often. As for Steve, things have continued to get more complicated for him. A few months ago, Steve's ex-wife reached out to me. It was unexpected, but she asked me for a big favor, to testify against Steve in her custody battle. She explained that she wanted to prove in court that Steve wasn't a good father and that, in his absence, he had left all the responsibility for his kids to me, a 15-year-old girl, which was obviously unacceptable. So I agreed. I testified and told everything that had happened how Steve forced me to take care of everything, how he left me alone with his kids, and how he even went as far as to threaten to throw me out of the house. I'm not sure how much my testimony helped in the custody case, because it was my word against his, but what I do know is that Steve's ex-wife now has primary custody of the kids. Steve still sees them, but not as much as before. Sometimes I wonder if everything that's happened has been for the best. Although these past months have been hard, I think we've all come out stronger in some way. My mom no longer has to deal with a toxic relationship, my dad is back, and I feel like I've learned to be stronger and more independent, since going through something like this makes you grow up fast. Now we just need to move forward and see what the future brings.